Today on the Edgy Veg, Harley and I are going to show you the effect of different egg replacers in a recipe. So, hi. She just wouldn't sit still, so that's why I'm holding her, so I can film this intro. Um, I'm going to use three popular egg replacers to see how they affect a cookie recipe. And then when you're baking, depending on how it affects the recipe, you can use that when you're deciding which egg replacer to use. So, today I'm going to use a flaxseed egg, aquafaba, very popular now and then also the vegan egg and we'll see like does the recipe does the, using this in the recipe make it denser or does it make it fluffier or does it make it more moist so let's find out I wanted a pretty neutral recipe to test this out so I'm going to use the literally dying skillet cookie Ella mode from my cookbook and just uh, make normal cookies out of it. You can really use this for any recipe that you have. I just find like chocolate chip cookies are a good base, like easy recipe. Everyone knows what they want their chocolate chip cookie to be like. She's killing me today. Harley, are you fucking? It's very crazy around here all of a sudden. So I find like people have like the one way that they like their cookie. Uh, whether it's like a crispy chocolate chip cookie or a moist chocolate chip cookie or a chewy one or whatever So I feel like this is a good like baseline to test these guys So when you're looking for an egg replacer for baking Egg replacers have on chocolate chip cookies. Would you guys? Being a mother is hard work when you're looking for a right a red blah, 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 blah. When you're looking for an egg replacer in baking, uh, the main job of the egg is to act as a binder and then also add moisture. So when we're looking at aquafaba, it's about three tablespoons. Froth is the equivalent to one egg. To make a flax egg, it's one tablespoon of flax and three tablespoons of water, whisked, and then let it sit for five minutes. And then with this vegan egg, and then with the vegan egg, it says that it's two tablespoons and half a cup of cold water to make one egg. So let's see if these hold up for moisture and if they hold up for binding. So to get aquafaba, you need a can of chickpeas. And what I do is I just make a hole in each end and then just drain out the aquafaba and measure it up. So you want three tablespoons for one egg. This recipe calls for two eggs normally in chocolate chip cookies, so I'm using six tablespoons. And then you just want to whisk it until it's broth. Okay, for the flax egg, again we want two eggs, so I'm using two tablespoons of the flax. Six tablespoons of water. Mix that together with a fork. All right, we have half a cup of water, two tablespoons of this powder, and then again, we're gonna whisk that. All right, so now I have three different batches of this cookie recipe, which I'm going to use for the base, and then just throw in the different egg replacers to see which one works. So first I'm going to mix up my wet ingredients, my sugar, my butter, and then add the dry ingredients, and then add the egg mixture. which looks lighter and almost like it needs a longer time to cook. Um, it's much lighter than the rest of them, which are a bit more golden brown. The flax egg, it looks a bit denser and it also, you can see the little flax seed, so it makes it a little bit darker, but it definitely 
cooked a lot more than the um, the vegan egg did. And then the aquafaba, I actually think is the closest thing to looking like a normal, normal, uh, non-vegan chocolate chip cookie. It tend to like melt and disperse a lot more than the other two did. And it also browned more like I'm used to seeing in chocolate chip cookies. Um, and it's a little bit firmer as well, which I did not think would be the case. I definitely thought that the vegan egg would be the least firm. But even if I look at the bottoms, like this is the aquafaba um, and it browns. Like I was really worried looking at these that I was going to burn the bottom of these cookies versus these two where this is a lot lighter and this one's even lighter than that. So that's it's interesting. Okay, I'm going to break each one of these cookies in half just because I'm curious to see what the inside looks like. Now again, if you want to cook these cookies for longer, you can definitely do that, but I'm definitely a fan of the like perfectly undercooked cookie. Um, so this one looks almost like doughy, but not in like a nice, um, I mean it tastes really good, but it's like, it's not a great undercooked texture. Okay, let's, this one is the, this one's the flax egg. Okay, that's a bit better. It's more of like a springy, doughy, undercooked texture. Mmm. Chewier. Like it's denser than the other one. And then the aquafaba. I think in terms of look of the texture, it's definitely my favorite. So far, aquafaba is winning. Oh, okay. So this is crispy on the outside, and like chewy and dense on the inside, which I think is my favorite. They're all really good. They're just different. I think the vegan egg one might be my least favorite. Yeah, it's too like buttery and raw tasting. So I think flax egg and aquafaba are the clear winner for me. I mean, the vegan egg definitely works. I mean, it's holding it together. It's giving it nice moisture. I just don't love the texture as much. So if you are looking for the perfect egg substitute for your baking or cookies, um, I mean, obviously this is a little bit different depending on what you are baking. If you like a denser cookie, I would definitely go with the flax eggs. So that'll also be really good for like muffins and like breads. So like banana bread, zucchini bread, that sort of thing. If you want a cookie that is crispy on the outside and really moist and chewy on the inside, I would definitely go with the aquafaba. That's my preferred type of cookie. I love like a nice crispy outside and dense inside. Um, and then if you want a really pillowy cookie, um, I would go with the, um, with the vegan egg, which might be really good in cakes actually. It's like eating a cloud. In terms of taste, you can't taste the egg replacer, so there's no real difference in taste, except for the flax egg, which does taste a little bit like heartier, which is why I think it'd be good in muffins and like breads and stuff. All right, guys, there you have it. Three egg replacers and how they differ in your baking. If you guys like this type of video, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up. Let me know in the comment section below what common baking or cooking ingredient you want me to test out next. Also, if you are new here, hello, welcome. Please hit the subscribe button and I will see you next time. No!